What are season you doing today? five. Oh, sorry. We're season f- worth it. Welcome back. A lot has changed. I moved to New York. There's Annie. She's helping produce the show. Anyways, this is an episode that I put together for your return to Los Angeles. We're going to be trying three large format meats at three drastically different price points to find out which one is the most worth it at its given price. Worth it. Oftentimes on menus, you'll see your appetizer section, your entrees. Sometimes there's an extra special bonus zone where there is a very expensive intended to be shared dish. And that's kind of what inspired this episode. Eating big stuff like this, you need friends. Why not eat that with my friends in this car today? Yeah, that's, that was my idea. That's not a novel thought. No, I just came up with that just now. That was the whole point of this whole excursion. My name is David Ko, and I'm chef owner of Little Fatty in the Compost Bar. Today we're gonna be eating Chinese barbecue pork. What kind of place is Little Fatty? It definitely appeals to like your old school Chinese American palate done with a little twist. We have walnut shrimp, uh, we have orange chicken. We also do like super authentic stuff. Like right now we have Don Don Mian. We use the Chinese American as like a gateway drug. It gets you in the door, but then you start ordering this other stuff and then you trust us and order more stuff. We're attached to a bar. Yeah. What's with that? It's kind of unique to get craft cocktails or mixology with Chinese food. I think that's what sets us apart. What's your favorite drink on that menu? Uh, right now I think it's the Pearl Diver. It's like this macadamia nut, rum, and brown butter and sugar mix. You can put it on pancakes. Ooh, Yeah, wow. it's that good. And so this barbecue pork, what piece of pork is this? The knee. It's called like a pork hock. I love taking like an underutilized cut of meat and turn it into something magical. I think that's the beauty of cooking. We use a combination of Shaoxing, soy sauce, ginger, garlic. And how long does that braise for? for about four or five hours. Let it sit overnight and then we air dry it like Peking duck so it gets really crispy. Put it in the fryer for about 15 minutes and then we uh, shellac it with barbecue sauce. Ketchup, honey, hoisin, five spice, garlic, ginger, all the classic flavors. So this is like a family style Chinese barbecue pork with buns and coleslaw and hot mustard. About how many people does this do? Uh, anywhere from four to seven. Why does that bun work with this pork? I think it's the perfect vehicle because it allows using your hands without getting your hands dirty. You get everything in there, the sauce, the coleslaw, crispy pork, and the unctuous soft pork all in a little bun. Do you have a specialist that you're buying those buns from? Uh, yeah, it's actually my cousin in um, Monterey Park. Whoa, he owns cool. a bakery. I'm so hungry. <laughs> no more questions, guys. Let's eat. Okay, cheers, Steven. Mmm. Mmm. We're drinking the Pearl Diver. Ooh, I have nothing in my stomach right now, and I felt a jolt of that. Okay. Perfect time to give you a knife yeah. so that you could. Come on, crack in there. Whoa. Whoa, here, I'll help you out. Hold the meat down. That's what I'm talking about. Is it wrong that I just want to eat this like a corn on the cob? Whoa. <laughs> it's finger food. I have a feeling you're gonna love this. Mmm. <laughs> I'm gonna cut you off a piece of this meat right here. Okay. Here, I'll help myself to a bun. There you go. Come on, Steven. I need some meat That's... on my bun. So a little touch of that. Now look at my bun and look at your bun. Because you are a gluttonous pig. Yeah, I'm a big fatty. <laughs> you're not a big fatty. The mustard? Oh. Oh no. Got a big glob because I'm used to just dousing my hot dogs in mustard. Cheers. Mmm, this is perfect. First of all, anything wrapped in a bun, I'll eat. This little package has everything. Fatty meat, it's also crispy. Powerful mustard. Oh! Do you feel it in your nose? Oh yeah. That's the mustard scale. One to nose. I think what's so great about this, it's a crispy skin. Totally. So everything here is so soft, and then yeah. you get to the skin, it's like. A lot of the times, a little sandwich. You're adding the texture from something else. But here, the meat itself has all of the textures represented. This is the kind of thing that I always see on the menu, and I'm like, ooh, I want to try that, but I can't order it by myself. You know what that reminds me of? You want to play basketball, you have to get nine other friends. You have to kind of like scrounge up <laughs> some people to kind of fill out the table, yeah. get some bench players coming <laughs> to dinner. Ooh. There you go. Ooh. So a little fatty. What did you think? It's fun to share a big Hot piece mustard. of meat, right? Yes. Sometimes you want to feel like a little fatty, right? And I definitely feel like a big fatty right now. Do you want to feel like something else? Huh? I don't know what to call this fact, you guys. Since I chose where we're going, I decided to do a little research of myself and see how you liked my fact. Okay. Fact time. The shift to a cooked food diet may have been key to the increase in brain size that occurred in early human history. What? Larger brains are more energy expensive and cooking increases the amount of energy that can be pulled from food. Fossils show a decrease in the size of human teeth around the same time that brain size increased, Whoa. suggesting a shift to eating softer, higher quality foods. What you're saying is big brain, 
little teeth. I'm saying we became smarter when we learned how to cook. I don't know how I feel about this. Facts are getting weirder. The restaurants are getting more arbitrary. Okay, look, did you eat good food already today? Yes. That's all you need to know. It's gonna happen two more times. So. Worth it. <laughs> I'm Joe Friedman, owner of Friedman's in Silver Lake. Daytime is new school Jewish deli, and then at night we have a full cocktail bar. The decor is really awesome. Thank I'm you. blown away by the wallpaper. Cool. Thanks. Today our chef Steph is going to be showing you how to make our brisket. Brisket is very much tied to Jewish food and family celebrations. You always eat it on the high holidays. It's usually kind of a homey dish. Our brisket is not the sort of overly sweet, like traditional Jewish brisket. The presentation is like Jewish meets Texas barbecue but the preparation I would say is quite French actually. We braise them for three to four hours using burnt onion, garlic, raw ginger. That all goes into the oven. Those are taken out, cryovac, and then held. We heat up in the cryovac bag. So it's this very, very tender meat that kind of falls apart and the sauce is then ladled on top. It's served with our palm friedman, which are like tater tots, b, &B pickles, rye bread, and smoked bone marrow. We wheel the brisket out on a cart and cut it table side using what we call our dad knife. Electric yeah. saw with two blades Electric that go like saw that? Yeah, two blades my dad has one of those. They're like, <laughs> yeah. why that knife? When you think about how you would cut a brisket at your house, you would yeah. be using a turkey cutter. To pair that with a very formal presentation of bringing it to a table has this really nice kind of dichotomy. And that's what Friedman's is about. You know, we have a great martini program, but you can always get a $5 hot dog at any time of the day. This is really beautiful. Welcome to dinner, Steven. What is this? It's a martini. Pickle juice. Pickle juice. Oh yeah, best pickly martini I've ever had. It's a kick. These are the Palm de Friedman. I'm using my hands. That's what horseradish mayo. Horseradish okay. mayo. Ooh, is that like whipped? <laughs> the texture of that was also very surprising. Cheers, I stole some of your sauce there. Adam, try this. It's like a potato 3D Dorito. Yeah. Okay, anywho. Let's do it. Let's make a little sandwiches here. Bone marrow. Oh my God. You wanted bone meat. Here it is, Steve. Oh my God. This is the literal meat of the bone. Hold up. Oh. <laughs> Gonna do a couple pickles on here. Cheers, Steven. Big oh meat adventure. God. I'm so happy. Wow. A lot of these flavors really make sense to me. I grew up in an Eastern European immigrant household, like pickles, rye bread, a roast. Everything is just like the perfect iteration of it. Nothing is familiar, yet everything is familiar. Many times I've thought while out to dinner, I wish I could just make a tiny sandwich of this food. Mm -hmm. And here I have that option, you know? I'm still thinking about that saw. I love it. The electric knife has this little light on it. It's both a spotlight and this drum roll for your meat. It's like Here's your meat. <laughs> I got a shareable fruit. This is just the thing you can find all over Los Angeles. Lime, salt, chili, it's delicious. I want this pineapple right here. Cheers. Ah, ah. That was like lightning on my mouth. So Friedman's, delicious meat, huh? I wanna cut everything with that salt. You want a salt like that? Yes. Get you it for Christmas. Can you hold this for me? Yeah, why? Cooking fact. Wait, what? Hold my fruit, cooking fact. Hold my fruit, cooking dance. So this is a continuation of early humans cooking for the first time. I like it, a two-parter. We're gonna get a third fact later? Nope. Research has shown that chimpanzees possess many of the cognitive capacities required to cook, Whoa. such as preference for cooked food, and the no patience way. to wait for cooked foods, ancestral humans could have shared the same abilities. Whoa. So you coming back to share these big shareable meats with me has uh, you know, some prehistoric origin stories. Wow. You are quite the archeologist. Thank you. Let I me... hope to be kind of like a food Indiana Jones one day. A food Indiana Jones? <laughs> what Did world? you hear that pun? Okay. Can you say that again? No. 
I'm Adam Perry Lang here at APL Restaurant in Hollywood. So, restaurant's pretty new. I noticed the established date yeah. on the menu. 1969 yeah. is when I was born. This is really a culmination of my journey as a chef. Beef is my thing. I love the procurement of it, aging it. You don't like to call it a dry age room necessarily. I don't, because it's not necessarily dry all the time. You want to have the correct ratio of humidity and evaporation off the meat. It's all in the details, in cooking, in life. I went to bladesmithing school just to make sure that last point of contact for the customer is perfect. The taste is just so different when you have a crummy blade. And I like to do things with intention, down to making my own knives. Today we're gonna do one of my signature dishes, which is the APL short rib with pickle salad. One of the key ingredients is actually to slather it in ballpark mustard. I love tying in nostalgia into cooking. I put that mustard on very lightly just so that the beef can brown underneath, but the outside can caramelize and make the rub stick so it creates a crust. The crust carries flavor and it protects the meat from drying out in the initial stage. Do you define this as a smoked meat? Is it barbecue or is it something else? I call it wood-fired cooking. There's good smoke and there's bad smoke. If you burn too low, all these different compounds don't have the opportunity to get burnt off into the atmosphere. That's going on the meat. If there's gonna be any smoke, you want it to be very subtle and over time. I put vinegar on this because the vinegar dries and what's left is the sour residue that creates a salivation. It gets your mouth excited and ready to eat. Vinegar is like nature's MSG. What we're doing for this episode is kind of a family style meat. Was there an intention there as a thing? Where yeah, you could completely. Bring it Fire brings people together. It's like celebratory, like the family roast. I mean, I think some of the best things in life are made simply. Ta-da! Big money, big meats. We both got the blue dream cocktail, but I got the mocktail. But we're both living the dream. The big meat dream. Ooh. Do you want to taste mine? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yours is way juicier. Can I point something out to you? The booth smells like meat. It's leathery. Yeah. Can I serve you some meat, please? please. Wow. Look at how tender this is. I don't need to cut it. I can just pull it apart. Cheers. Okay, cheers. It's like if pot roast and barbecue had a baby. It has like this delightful layer of smokiness. When you swallow it, it still is there and yes. present. Which part of this meat is your favorite? Honestly, it's the crust. I've never had a better crust. Usually, it's more of a shell than a flavor component, but here, it's actually quite tender, and there is like a rich flavor of black pepper, which I really love. Oh my god. Oh my god. This meat is just surrendering to me. I'm gonna just grab a piece. Oh! <laughs> Holy smoke. <laughs> it has surrendered to my fingers. Here comes the pickle meat sandwich. There's something very beautiful about a plate that comes with just meat and pickles. To me, those are like the two core food groups. Vegetables and protein? Pickle and meat. That's the food group, is pickle. Pickles and meat, pickles and meat. I'm a little lad who loves pickles and meat. Can I just take this? Sure. And grab the bone. Let's see if this falls apart. Oh, wow. Oh. oh. You got all the meat. <laughs> Looks like my wish is coming true. Are you gonna have? Oh my oh, God. Yeah. That is crazy. This is not fat, but it's squishy like fat. Is this any less satisfying to you than a steak? Because you could come to this restaurant and you could get a very nice steak. I would probably take the short rib. I think it, for me, depends on the day of the week. This feels like Sunday evening shared meats. There's also something really great about having a big table where everybody's eating and they're all tasting the same thing. Mm. You know, it's mm. not like, oh, mine's good, how's yours? Oh, it's good. We can look at each other and we know what it tastes like because it's in all of our mouths. Like your brain's connected through Whoa. the invisible network. Whoa. The meat matrix. This may be the ultimate group bonding experience. Yeah. Forget escape rooms. Group meat. First episode back. You feel good? Yeah. You feel very full, very satiated. I don't think I'll be eating meat for a day or two, but after that, detox, back to meat. Which shareable meat was the most worth it to you at its given price? I would have to say a little fatty. Wow. Yeah. They're all very good, but Little Fatty's was under $30. Plus, it's a truly Chinese American restaurant, and I love yeah. that. I think my worth it winner is Friedman's. The best balance of a meat I'd love to eat on its own and a meat that's gonna be great as a little sandwich afterwards. I took some of that meat home, turned it into a spaghetti sauce. It was phenomenal. Adam, Adam who's your worth it winner?
What? Wow. Good answer. I'll accept it. Hey, Annie, who's your worth it winner? I saw that one coming, actually. She was scarfing down the Freedmans after we left. We're going to uh, your neck of the woods for next episode. Want to give us a little sneak peek? It rhymes with hurry, and it's a very bad basketball player. LeBron rules. <laughs> So we need to learn how to share before we could cook. And by the way, we're talking about possibly a million years ago. Why are your facts all about millions of years ago? That's when the best stuff happens. Oh, yes.